Sets form the backbone of the vast majority of modern mathematics. They're pretty dull by themselves, especially when you're first learning them. They're just a collection of objects with no structure or relations whatsoever, so it just amounts to listing the elements out. In this video, I want to talk about how simply putting a little bit of structure on a set can liven it up significantly and open the door to curiosity and seeing deeper patterns at play. So without further ado, let's start with looking at a couple dull looking sets. Set or a collection of objects by itself is pretty boring. For example, if S is A, B, C, since there's no relationship that I'm telling you between A, B, and C, there's almost nothing that we can say about this set. We just have to write it out. So maybe let's add some relationships. As something basic, let's just consider B less than or equal to A and C less than or equal to B. And then we could maybe draw this structure as some sort of linear thing where maybe I'll put A on top and C on the bottom for higher means larger. We can also write it horizontally, that's fine too. Okay, so this is still not too exciting, but at least it's a little bit more visual than just writing out the set. I want to consider a nicer example. I'm going to take the power set of S, and that's going to be the set of all subsets of S. We can list all the subsets out, so that's going to be the empty set, uh, all the singletons, A, B, C, all the pairs, A, B, A, C, B, C, and of course the whole set itself is a subset. This is awful to look at. This is a big mess. But we can add structure. So let's say a subset T1 is less than or equal to a subset T2 if T1 is contained in T2. So this slightly curvier version is the subset notation. And notice the similarity between these two symbols. So for example, the set A is contained in AB. So we say A is less than or equal to AB. But the set A by itself is not contained in B, C, and vice versa. So actually, these two are incomparable sets. Okay, so let's try to draw a similar sort of structure that we did before with larger sets on top and smaller sets below. So let's start with A, B, C. That's the biggest set that we have. We'll put that on top, and then we'll put the empty set as the smallest because it's a subset of everything else. And then maybe one line above, we'll have all the singletons. So A by itself, B by itself, C by itself. Above that, we'll have A, B, A, C, and B, C. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line between two sets. If the bigger one is larger than the smaller one, they're comparable, and there's nothing in between. This looks an awful lot like a cube. If I flatten a cube, I get a very nice picture like this. And this is much prettier to look at and also inspires all sorts of interesting questions. The first question I can ask maybe is why does it look like a cube? Is there a relationship to a cube here? Another question that I can ask is, okay, well, we saw that the uh, previous example can be drawn on a line. Can I draw this one on the line? Or another question that comes to mind when I talk about order is if I take two elements, what is the element that lies immediately above or below those two elements? So the least upper bound or the greatest lower bound is the technical term. So as a hint or an example here, the element that lies immediately above the singletons A and B is just the set A comma B. And the element that lies above A and B, C is the set A, B, C. So can you think of how to generate that larger set from the two smaller sets? And can you do the same thing with the lower bound? Okay, I'm going to switch gears slightly, and I want to look at another dull-looking set. And that's going to be the set containing 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 15, 30. And you might recognize that these are all the factors of 30. And again, this is another one of these boring sets. It's just a collection of numbers. It doesn't really mean much. So let's add some interesting structure. So I'm going to say A is less than or equal to B with this curly less than or equal to sign if B is a multiple of A. For example, 2 is less than or equal to 6, and 3 is less than or equal to 6, but 5 is not less than or equal to 6 with my relation here. Okay, so let's draw out our structure again. And we'll start with 30 on top because that's a multiple of everything. And 1 on the bottom because it's only a multiple of itself. 
And then one layer above one, we have the Purim, so 2, 3, and 5. And then one layer above those, we have 6, 10, and 15. And let's draw all the connections just like we did before. I'm drawing a connection whenever the number above is a multiple of the one below it, and there's no number in between. And when the dust clears, we see that we actually get the exact same structure. It's another cube. How did that happen? So I'll leave to you to ponder why a cube appears here and in our last example. Is there some kind of deeper connection between these two examples that we can make explicit? So this is a very common theme in pure math where we compare two structures and we don't necessarily care what the individual elements look like, but we say that the structures look the same. So we call these isomorphic and we use this equality with a little tilde on top isomorphic comes from greek i believe iso means the same morphic means form so it's the same form and these are the same structure to a pure mathematician there are many other structures that we can place on sets it doesn't have to be order like this uh, one of the more common ones is algebraic stuff like groups vector spaces rings and those are combining elements with addition and multiplication, for example. Or we can also place some kind of topological structure on a set, which tells us how elements are close to each other or far away from each other. So stuff like metric spaces or topological spaces. We can also place some geometric structure on it. So for example, every time you draw R as a line, you're implying some kind of geometric structure to R, or the complex numbers as some plane. Or we can place some kind of order structure. So comparing elements like we did above, we get all kinds of interesting graphs and shapes like that. There are many other kinds of structure that I won't talk about now, but these are just a taste of some of the things that we study in pure math. The structure is somehow more important to us than the individual elements. There are a ton of different doors here to explore now, and I encourage you to be curious and explore to your heart's content. And if you want to see one of my favorite structures to study in pure math, then take a look at this video.